What are you doing? The funeral home's that way. We're not going to a funeral. I knew that was the only way to get you in the car. What the hell? I bought new shorts for that. You've been going down a bad path lately. How lately? About the past 23 years, give or take. I can't help what I did as a fetus. I'm sorry. You took me from my apartment just to drive me back to my apartment. Breaking and entering isn't as fun if you know what's happening. I'm not an alcoholic. Your file says otherwise. Listen, you're an alright guy. Damn near human. We just want to fix you. I would have to be mentally broken or not already castrated for you to do that. I'm good. Oh, alright. How about you just open your Christmas present from this year? Oh boy, I hope it's a snake. What the fuck? Somebody shut him up with some duct tape. On it. What could possibly be wrong with me? You're not an RPG guy. I thought that was my race. Nope, my bad. Got him mixed up. Hey, good news. We're not getting charged with kidnapping. I just got off the phone with the government, and we're on good terms. Oh, tell them I said hi. You know what, Rex? How about you go? Uh, Scott's roommate of nine months. I think that makes sense. You're not my roommate. I thought you knew. <laughs> uh, I don't know what RPGs are. <laughs> I think you're being a little bitch about them. Yeah, what are RPGs again? I don't know, a gun? Do I at least have a chance to explain myself? This is America, so no! This isn't America, this is Ohio! It all started 23 years ago, the doctor said. It's not an RPG fan. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't always play video games, which is why there are no records of me prior to 03. This was the year I truly started playing video games, so pretty much the year I was truly born, which you know what that means. I'm a minor. I remember my first experiences with the medium being in the arcade. You know, you go to the laundromat as a kid and you're a big fan of the dryer, but then as soon as you lay eyes on the Galaga in the corner, well, the laundry fandom lost a member. The classics, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Galaga, these were my favorites, so you know I'm fun at parties. My first video game experiences, and to this day, they're some of my most beloved titles. Sort of limp to say. Saying you love arcade games and your favorite is Pac-Man is like saying squares are my favorite boxes. Like, yeah, it's true, but who cares? It's such a basic answer. Anybody who hears you like arcade games wants to hear something more elaborate or obscure, but I'm not gonna say I give a shit about clacks for respect. I love those old Namco classics. They were and still are some of my favorite experiences. They're so simple and are pretty much the same song and dance every time you play them, but their gameplay never gets old. Around this time was when I discovered the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was hooked up at my grandma's house in the den area. I remember distinctly a goldfish cracker was lodged in the cartridge slot. Yeah, try it. It works. This was my cousin's old system and he left it there alongside a shoebox full of games. These are human teeth. Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. I easily played this one the most. Uh, keep in mind, I really fucking hated ducks. Using the zapper gun was so cool and swapping over to Super Mario Brothers let me live out my fantasy of looking at sewage colored man. Super Mario Brothers 3 was there too. God, what a game. Every time I play it, I discovered something new. 
holy shit, Excite Bike and Ninja Turtles 1 and 3 and Kung Fu Heroes and Adventures of Bayou Billy because there always has to be a seventh. But I didn't want to be a mooch, I wanted to be this. So I eventually received my other cousin's hand-me-down Sega Genesis Model 2. It came with a cartridge of Sonic the Hedgehog and I officially gave up on life. This opened a world of possibilities and closed another. I'm a video game owner now. Mom! Sonic the Hedgehog was the first standalone video game I ever owned. I played it so much I couldn't get past the second zone. Me personally, I blame the controller. Why did I always play with butter in my hands? Eventually for my birthday, I received a purple Game Boy Advance, my first brand new game system. The game I got with it? Sadly, this was after my butter phase. Licensed kids games were abundant, and I played them for all they were worth. However, I also had Mario Kart Super Circuit, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3, and Super Mario Advance 2 Super Mario World. This was my game. I played this to death. Until I get stuck at this one part where you finish a level and then the world map tells you to go f yourself. I love the world, the power upset, sense of discovery. This was my first true video game love. Throughout that year, I got really into shapes, so for my next birthday, I got a GameCube alongside the Game Boy Player Attachment, letting me play all my Game Boy games on the TV. I mainly owned just licensed games for the console, but still adored it nonetheless. I had to go to my friend's house to play actual video games, like Pac-Man Fever. That Christmas, I received a blue Game Boy Advance SP and a colorblind diagnosis. A few years later, I snagged my cousin's PlayStation alongside a disc-only copy of Gran Turismo and the demo for Rascal. I didn't play this much. 2007, I got a Nintendo DS Lite, and by 2008, I got my Wii, and I played so much Wii Sports and Wii Play, Mario Galaxy, Smash Brothers, Brawl, GoldenEye 007, Mario Kart Wii, WarioWare Smooth Moves, alongside discovering my love for the history of gaming. I could download classic titles with this system, even the ones I played at my grandma's house. There was no need for her anymore. That was roughly my childhood gaming experience. After this, while I still received some game systems as gifts, I was a lot more conscious of the stuff I wanted. I wasn't as dependent on whatever my parents thought I might like. I knew I wanted a Wii U because it was better than wanting meth, but I didn't even scratch the surface of all the Nintendo 64 I played at others' houses, each and every game I owned, and what they meant to me, how I played and couldn't get past the first level for dozens of hours of Frogger's Adventures on Game Boy Advance, a 40 minute long game. But hopefully this gave you a good idea as to what I was raised on, what game and consoles made me who I am today. Notice how Lufia 2 wasn't mentioned? As your therapist, I think it should be open to more things, like RPGs and murder! But I've tried RPGs! And I've tried murder! It doesn't count till you like it! So what are RPGs again? Isn't it a political party in Guinea? Why are you so hell-bent on me being an RPG guy? You don't even know what RPGs are! Yeah, I do. Political party in Guinea. We've been over this. I always thought it was like a BLT, but for ranch peas and grapes. Well, why did you all give me Xenoblade? Well, that's an RPG. I didn't even know Xenoblade was pronounced like that. I thought we got you an enema. Yeah, I was wondering why I didn't shove this up your ass. No! Based on my childhood gaming experiences, it should be fairly obvious I enjoy more arcadey games. Now, what does that mean? Outside of me being wrong, well, it doesn't mean it has to be from the arcade. More so, it retains elements of arcade gameplay. Look at Pac-Man, for example. I can all day. Quick reflexes, simple controls, easy to grasp concept, anybody can pick it up and play, but very few can master it. Have you seen professional Pac-Man players? No, nope, they live in the Vatican. The concepts at play here really matter to me. If a game is like this at all, I'm gonna sleep well that night. This is probably why platforming is my favorite genre of gaming. You run and jump, it can't get much simpler than that. To anybody who has an argument against that, my mom never got Tetris. Pong? My grandma said, what the f is that? But with platformers, I mean, they would 100% not be able to play them well, but they at least understand what you're supposed to do and the objective. It's just like life. Get to the end. Running and jumping. There are an endless amount of things you can do with that. You can be a plumber, an evil plumber, a plumber's girlfriend. I value simplicity at face value, where like, oh, this is super easy to get, but when you dig deeper, you find all these elements that add up to the game being as good as it is. So just because my favorite genre is platformers doesn't mean I'll get sweaty for Leps World 2. No, you take games like Super Mario Galaxy, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Free, Sonic Mania, Mega Man X, Celeste, you start playing them and immediately you're like, I get it, I understand how to play, what to do, and why people give a shit. But then you start to notice amazing design details that went into all aspects of the gameplay, realizing, wow, this game is a masterclass of design. This affects that and that can't be there without this. That's what turns an already great game into a masterpiece. I love the pick up and play nature of platformers, how you get instant gratification when you jump. You're like, wow, I did that. When you defeat an enemy, when you just barely cross a gap, there's a rhythm to it all. It may be one of the most generic video game genres, like it's what I immediately think of when video game gets brought up, but I think it's for good reason. That doesn't mean I'm opposed to other genres. I love puzzle games for a lot of the same reasons. Rhythm games can be incredibly satisfying and addictive. Adventure games are a dream to get completely submerged in. Shooters I'm awful at, but they can be a blast. Get to the f***ing Xeno 
I don't like RPGs. Now, what is an RPG? Why would you ask me? Role-playing games are games where the player controls the actions of a character and slash or several party members immersed in some well-defined world. Oh, so uh, what does that make me? An abuser. Technically speaking, this genre definition can be linked to pretty much most games regardless of genre. Take any game. You are controlling the actions of a character and are immersed in a well-defined world. The definition of an RPG can be a bit hazy. I've seen people call the fucking economy an RPG. But you can't fool me. RPG is just like a cloud. I know one when I see it. Oh, th there's no debate. Let us go into some of the characteristics of traditional RPGs. Number one, elf sh**. Fantasy is generally the go-to genre of the genre. It kind of stems from the origins of video game RPGs, which were tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. I'll stick to Yahtzee. Of course, an RPG can be set in any kind of world, but just like how puzzle games love the colored shape trope, fantasy is the go-to here. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some of my best friends are a fantasy. So what's the big deal? I love fantasy, put down three letters, I'm sold. Yeah, it seems to me you don't have much of an argument here. Like Stalin? Stalin f***ing hated RPGs but love Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we're, I'm we're, into we're, it. We're on the same line. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. But, absolutely. I get it. But, I get it good now. Point. Good point. Better point. Yeah. Better point. Yeah. Better point. yeah. 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 Not Flint Smash Geist or Burnout Crash Not Mario Party 6 or Ultra Smash Neither Clubhouse Games or Wii Fit Plus Nor Family Feud on SNES All the games I play, whether good or bad Have tropes in common, my favorite two dads May be rushed or plain or flawed But they ain't RPGs, oh thank god Are my tastes just bad? Am I the one to blame? Or is it RPGs that are dumb and lame? No! Why don't you play them? They just take so damn long to complete why don't you play the 60 hours just to rinse and repeat? But you could cry for years just to feed that myself. Why waste all this time on just one game? Why don't you play them? I just don't like them! I just wanna play stupid Nintendo games! They aren't this stupid! Why don't I like them? Okay. Turf-based battles in too much text I'd rather be out not having sex Menu clutter and useless stats And random encounters can kiss my ass No gameplay till hours in Combat ready? How did I win? Same thing happens over again And that their fun part comes up when? I missed one thing and now I'm lost That one inch of text really meant a lot There's some shop with items I can't afford So grab for money, you won't be bored I'm tired, I'm scared, I'm not having fun There's no other way this can be spun What do I do? What do I check? It's an RPG, what did I expect? Listen guys, you can have a pin Why don't you play the You're not my style? Number two, wait your turn, fucker! The de facto setup for RPGs most think of is the turn-based RPG. I don't want to wait to be disappointed. This isn't a pregnancy. So let's look at how a turn-based RPG works. You're exploring this vast world and experiencing a story as it unfolds. That's the point of most RPGs, to create a universe that you want to get lost in. Tell a story unlike any other with some of the most memorable characters out there. This is why video games are such a popular medium to tell stories through. You are a character. This story is happening to you. Your friends in the game start to feel real if it's done right. Most role-playing games heavily depend on an engaging story, and of course stories need conflict, so what happens when danger strikes? Well, I'm walking around enjoying myself thinking, what's next? Homicide. Here's a list of things I can do. I can attack, I usually perform some special ability like existence. Well, that didn't do a damn thing. Or just give up, run, bitch out, they don't care. So I select what I want to do, I watch the character do what I told them to do. Uh, then it's the enemy's turn, because it's only fair. They attack, thanks. And now we're back to me. Uh, I'll probably attack again. Actually, it might be a good time to heal myself with some medicine. Uh, good, I brought Dayquil. Uh, all right, and it's their turn again. They attack, and now we're back to me again. All right, obviously, there's nothing inherently wrong with turn-based battles. It's a time-tested gameplay style. If it was completely outdated and uninteresting, it would have been ripped out of games eons ago. There's a reason text-based adventure games died out and their technology is being reused on Tinder. We still get turn-based battles in games constantly. They obviously work. There is depth here, and most video game players like them. The biggest media franchise on the planet is Pokemon, and it's a turn-based RPG. It works. But want to see why Scott's a f***ing idiot?
I can see it! So the point of a role-playing game is to make me feel as if I'm playing a role. If I'm supposed to be immersed as this character, why are battles set up like this? This is potentially the worst way to immerse me in an experience. When would my mortal enemy bat number four wait for me to pick an attack and then let her rip? Why would I give them a chance to hurt me? That's just counterproductive! And going through my list of attacks I can perform, it doesn't make me feel like I'm the one performing them. It feels like I'm commanding that character to do it. Turn-based combat almost feels at odds with the rest of what these games are trying to do. If it's trying to make me feel as if I am the character, going to the extent of having me name them myself, why are the battles like puppet shows? Well, I guess you could view RPGs as a performance. The origins of tabletop RPGs, you announce everything you're doing as if it's a book being written right there on the spot. So there's some showmanship to it all. It's a role-playing game. So it's like these are actors taking on the roles of the these characters. So again, why can I name this guy myself if I'm playing the role of him? Most of the time, the actor doesn't pick the character's name. I just don't feel like I'm doing anything in these battles. Clicking through a menu doesn't feel like I'm accomplishing anything, and landing a great attack, I just don't feel incredibly accomplished. I selected a menu option. I'll play Pac-Land for that, thank you. Taking turns just slow things down so much. Like, what is he waiting for? Just shoot me! To be fair, I mean, it does offer strategy. You have to sit and think sometimes. Like, hmm, how do I want this man to gut me? Not every game should have action-packed combat. It's good to have options. I just f***ing hate this one. Out of all the games to have a ton of enemy encounters, why do RPGs have them the most? They go on forever, and there's a million of them you have to go through all against the same enemies over and over again. Think of everything you could do with all that time. Nope, I got nothing. And then there's the fact that many of these games have random encounters. All right, here we are, number three. Oops! Oh good, I try to make my way from point A to point B, but I'll randomly be forced to partake in a battle. I don't even see the enemies when I run into them. Like, what's the context of this happening? Oh wow, here I am. Hey. Sure, it keeps you on your toes, but it's like, how often do I have to be on my toes? This is painful. It's like, yeah, it's a surprise. You always have to be ready for a battle, but on your way to a location, you can expect at least two or three random battles thrown in there. So at that point, it's not a surprise. I'm expecting it. Did these need to happen? Do they make the game better? No! But to be fair, lots of non-RPGs have random enemy placements that don't need to be there. Like, I could give a shit about your Goomba placement. But these random encounters happen out of nowhere. You don't even see where the enemies are. You just randomly get thrown into a battle, you can't easily avoid this, and when you're in the battle itself, it takes just as long as any standard battle in the game. Battles that are required for progression. Well, it's more fun to get shot by surprise than to know ahead of time. Well, I guess random encounters are here because another big element of RPGs are experience points, leveling your character up from string cheese weak to being stronger than any being. I can do anything now. I can... Stomach playing Final Fantasy. Number four, feeling like you did something today. Having a visual indication of just how much stronger you get after each and every battle is unbelievably satisfying. I think experience points or EXP make RPGs for people. You know just how long it takes to go through a whole battle with an ant. And that ant can kick your ass like it puts up a fight. But then a few hours in, you level up and you're more powerful. You can one shot kill those ants. Character development. I'm now better than ants. But you know what you have to do in so many of these games? You have to grind for your experience. Experience points. You have to wander around, get into random encounters, and just win a bunch of battles to level up before you progress. Of course, most of the time, you don't have to, but it's kind of necessary if you don't want to stain the carpet with your decapitated head. Grinding almost feels like I'm exploiting the game sometimes. Like, is this really how the game was designed? For me to walk around in circles for two hours doing nothing but getting into random battles fighting weak enemies to gain extra experience? I just killed snails for 20 minutes. I'm ready to take on Satan. I think we have some more to say. Target employee? <clears throat> He works at Target? Oh yeah, big time. I love his work. And did you see how stocked the shelves were today? Oh yeah, I saw how stocked the shelves were today. Oh uh, yeah, Scott, you mostly knew my brother. He worked at Wendy's. He was a really good guy, mostly dead nowadays. Didn't he work at Wendy's? Shh, he's talking. His dying wish was to see you play near replicant version 1.224744. I think he was having a seizure. See, we, we care about you, man. My foot's turning purple. See, you lock yourself out of so many experiences saying you're not an RPG guy. That's the oldest excuse in the book. Gets me out of jury duty. What else am I supposed to say? Why, yes, please. I'll take one, sweep it in four. My parents met over that one. What about the stories of these games? That's why you play them. So here we have number five. Incredible, engaging, long-winded, weird-as-hell plots. Video games can house some of the greatest tales ever told, and it seemed like RPGs were the only way to tell those kind of stories years ago. And I think there's a clear reason to make a story into a video game compared to just a movie or a book. It's the experience. There are tons of video game stories that are great. 
They would blow as a film. The stories of many iconic RPGs play out almost like they're a 4,000 page novel with stupid haircuts. Oh, and you have to do the same thing 400 times. A lot of these stories are great with huge moments of emotion. Character deaths mean more because when you're doing turn-based battles, you often have multiple party members. If one of them died, it stings that much more. It can be so much more effective than other mediums to tell the story. But then you have the other side of RPGs where I can't take this seriously. I am a prince talking to a mechanic. Okay. I thought I'd uh, adjust my speech here. Scott, the lack of RPGs you play is horrifying. And I've seen bees. Oh, he means it. To show how much we care, I have a surprise witness. At an intervention? I present to you K Swiss of Bankruptcy Patrol. Oh my god, you got a white guy? This is Scott's bank account without RPGs. Sure, he's buying them, but he's spending all his time playing and buying other games. If he sat down and played an RPG, he wouldn't have time to waste money on other games. Well, at least I'm stimulating the economy. If anything, you're doing immense damage to the economy. You're buying plenty of RPGs, but you have no actual interest in them. Companies think you want RPGs, so they make more, but when more RPGs are announced, you get annoyed and tell people not to play them. Without this issue, people who actually want to play RPGs buy them. Thus, supply and demand return to a renaissance, if you will. We call this issue the Scottless economy. With you actually playing RPGs, we call it an economy. You son of a bitch, I love the economy! Now we have one of the big ones. Number six, these games never f***ing end. My god, why do these take so long? Role-playing games are generally on the longer side of things. At the least, they can usually run you 20 hours from start to finish. As somebody who really just wants to experience as many video games as possible, why would I want to play one 50-hour game when I could play five 10-hour ones? I know many want games to be as long as possible. I saw people complain how Final Fantasy VII Remake was only 30 hours. My weekend's 48 hours, what am I going to do with that extra 18? I don't know, I personally get a little turned off when I hear how long a game is. I've never been a big, I better be able to squeeze this many hours out of a game kind of guy. But I totally understand if people are like that, it's just, I don't care if a game's 10 hours, that sounds like a pretty sweet length to me. But RPGs are so long because they have so many battles and so many of those battles are the same things over and over again. It's just the amount of time I spend in these games, I don't feel it's justified. And then we have number seven. Sensory overload. What the f am I looking at? Is this really the least complicated that could have made this menu look? I want to get the black desert menu on my back. These games have such thick ass menu systems with some menus and some menus and tutorials on how to use the menus and honestly fairly unnecessary user interfaces that overcomplicate what could be a simple and intuitive experience. I think I have something to say here. Yeah, I do too. That's it. I feel like you're really blocking yourself from experiences that will truly better your life and outlook on art as a whole. I wrote this when I thought we were still talking about guns. Okay, and what do you think about role-playing games? Oh, just don't be a bitch. It is your place. <laughs> yeah, I got a RPG delivery. Yeah, why didn't you come earlier? I work today. I love the economy. <laughs> oh, yeah! yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo! Woo! Oh, I deliver RPGs to average youth. So they're going to be RPG guys. Here. This is Madden. Yeah. No. No. Anybody want to rent the second room here? What are you all RPGs too? RPGs can be f***ing anything. I was talking to someone and they f***ing catfished me. I've been only talking about turn-based RPGs, but what about action RPGs, strategy RPGs, MMO RPGs, JRPGs, which is just if a role-playing game is made in Japan. That's it. Action RPGs are like, take out the turns and just make them just normal fights. Oh, hit this button to attack. Oh. Oh, thank God. I gotta say though, a lot of action RPGs just feel like hack and slashes or shooters with numbers. MMORPGs, let's take this and pair it up with Omegle. Look at these players online, these are my type of people, we all know how to use menus. Strategy RPGs, I got nothing. These are all such different types of games, and so many games outside of RPGs have RPG elements. You can make an argument that any one of these games are RPGs. Madden, look at all these stats, how is this not an RPG? People constantly make the argument Zelda's an RPG? Sure, keep telling yourself that. It has RPG elements, pretty much any of the sins I mentioned, and then some. I give up. I lost. I guess I have to become an RPG guy, because if I don't, I can't enjoy anything. Leap year this year? It's December. Oh, food's here. 
What is this? They're ribs. I thought we were getting a corn dog. These are nature's corn dogs. I can't eat ribs. I'm not hungry. I am vegan. Oh, come on. Somebody has to. I ordered the economy size. <laughs> Let's start with a few that started it all, Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior originally over here in America. Playing this now, it is so simple and basic, but there's a charm to it, and many of the systems we see in RPGs today, they're here in full force. It's weird to say a game like this has aged well, because it hasn't, but when you put it side by side to modern RPGs, you start to notice more similarities and differences. Dragon Quest has always been an RPG staple, primarily in Japan. Over here, it's not as celebrated. Come on, this is America. I like Mickey Mouse and f***ing my wife. But Dragon Quest has always been there. I'm surprised how many people I've run into who immediately recognizes the slime enemy from the series. The spin-offs are all over the place, like Dragon Quest Swords on Wii, which is pretty much a Dragon Quest game, played in first person with a ton of automated movement and motion control combat. You just swipe away at the enemies, and overall, it feels like a Dragon Quest game for a f***ing idiot. I love it. But of course, we have Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Number 8, Ass Long Titles. Oh my god, this game is so lovely. Like, it's just so... happy. Even when dark moments happen, this is just such a jolly world. These characters' designs are so fun. I'm not a fan of more typical anime-esque designs, but with Dragon Quest, I like the style. It just feels so nice. The characters, the monsters, even the gameplay. I'm sure the battles are more tedious than if it wasn't a traditional RPG, but it's not that annoying. I like this game. I just don't want to spend 100 hours liking it. But then we have Final Fantasy, easily the most iconic RPG series. While Dragon Quest was far more traditional in terms of fantasy world with dragons, beat the evil, Final Fantasy continues to go all over the place. Again, this is a prince. Each Final Fantasy is pretty much completely separate from the last, which is how we get such game titles as Final Fantasy 13 2. The Final Fantasy game I played the most is Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I like it, but man, like I said, action RPGs just don't feel like RPGs to me. They feel like hack and slash games with stats. This series hasn't always been turn-based, and that's not even counting junk like spin-offs. Final Fantasy XI and XIV are MMORPGs. Am I the only one to find that bizarre that mainline numbered titles in the Final Fantasy series are MMOs? Like, why not make them their own designated spin-off series like Final Fantasy Online, but... Alright. 15 and 7 Remake are action RPGs. No turns here. This was done to give Final Fantasy more broad appeal and make it so a FIFA fan could play it. So I gotta be honest, I have a lot more fun with this gameplay style. But I almost feel patronized playing it, like I'm too dumb to enjoy the older games, so here's some flashier bullshit. Yeah, is this, uh, stale pretzels? I'd like to place an order. Yeah, the stale pretzels. Oh, oh, get some ribs! No, it's stale pretzels. All they have are... stale pretzels. No, if you ask, they'll make it for you. Yeah, I'll do a side of pretzels. It's kind of a weird way to say ribs. My god, is this how we sounded to him? Depends on how he pronounces ribs. Of course, if you're more of a classic RPG guy, there are still tons of games releasing that are supposed to be direct callbacks to those older games. Bravely Default and Octopath Traveler. If you're not a fan of modern Final Fantasy, these games bring us back to a simpler, far slower time. Yeah, I'm not as into this. When you program a fast forward button into the base game, I feel like you could have just designed the gameplay to be more efficient. But God, Octopath, there isn't any other game that looks quite like this. And the music! Kingdom Hearts answers the age-old question of what would happen when you put Final Fantasy and Disney together. Actually, I don't know if it does or not. And all these games come courtesy of Square Enix, your one-stop shop for RPGs. They've also released other iconic titles like Chrono Trigger and the Mana series, which is interesting considering it was one of the few classic RPGs that went for an action approach comparative to turn-based. While I highly disagree on The Legend of Zelda being an RPG, at least one entry in the series is definitely one. Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. You kill enemies to level yourself up in various departments. I like it. Zelda 2 gets a lot of flag, but it's honestly pretty enjoyable. And Nintendo's RPG series, I mean, we have the Mother series, or Earthbound, which this definitely helped many get into RPGs. Most games of this nature were fantasy, which has its fans, but Earthbound you were playing as a kid in a town. It made it stand out, and I think it helped many find more of an attachment with the genre. Now Pokemon, on the other hand, can f*** right off. I've tried so many times, but I just can't get into Pokemon. I feel like I've 100% missed the boat on playing the franchise. If I played it as a kid, I feel like I'd find it easier to enjoy now. If I start the game, I just feel like it's a slog. I don't feel this sense of wonder. I just feel like I'm walking from point A to point B, mashing the A button to get through text boxes, fighting other Pokemon by, again, mashing the A button. At least turn base works really well here in terms of immersion. You're not the Pokemon, you're commanding them what to do, which I think works much better contextually than most other RPGs. I want to like these games though, I just 
can't get into them. Same with the Xenoblade series. I'm so happy that this franchise went from not coming outside of Japan to here's a Smash Brothers character, multiple remasters and remakes, a sequel, another sequel, an expansion to the sequel. It's really cool to see that, and I think the original Xenoblade is unbelievably impressive. Like, this world is in a Wii game. It's just not personally really my thing. But then you have Golden Sun. Definitely gives me Dragon Quest feelings of happiness. I do like a lot about this. But then you have the beginner RPGs from Nintendo, based on the Mario franchise. Super Mario RPG, Mario & Luigi, Paper Mario, many of these games actually make turn-based combat fun. They have action commands, which means, hey, pick an attack, then time your action just right by hitting a button at this exact moment. It's almost like a rhythm game, it keeps me involved and entertained. Sure, some of the games are dog sh but I think these games help tremendously in conveying the appeal of RPGs to those who don't play a ton of them. No matter how much you enjoy role-playing games, you have to admit, they aren't the easiest to jump into most of the time. You gotta wean yourself on a Mario RPG before you jump into Persona 5. Holy f this game is so stylish and cool! Listen to the music, the setting is so neat! I think I've become an RPG guy! And I f***ing hate myself! What am I? What have I become? I don't even use one of these! Ah! Oh! Hello, my name is God. Oh my God, I meet Jesus and a Target employee in the same week? You know, we should we should do something nice for him. Like to place a fling smash order? What do I want? <coughs> yeah, I'll go with fling smash this time. <coughs> Christ, it's been a busy day for us. Two deliveries? This economy's about to be the f***ing best. So I thought you just delivered RPGs. Well, RPG can mean a lot of different things. For example, like when you're really playing Gex. Hey, kid, you want a Gex? No, no, no. I have to pay for it. God, I don't want to f*** the economy. I just wanted to give you a formal warning on your recent performance as a human. You're really f***ing it. I don't want to f*** anything! What did I do wrong? First off, that time you drank that water and made a face, f*** you. I make water. Second off, you're trying to be an RPG guy. I thought that's what everybody wanted! See, I crafted humanity to have the instinctive trait to not like RPGs. So that's why cavemen never played them. Then all of a sudden, evolution was like, fuck you, here's Ogre Battle 64, person of lordly caliber, the famous game that everybody loves, and ever since we've had a bunch of mutants walking around playing RPGs. So it's normal to not like RPGs? It's normal to not like all kinds of things, whether it's RPGs or murder. You never would've known. Scott, Bubby. You know who you are and what you like and don't like. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not an RPG guy. You know this deep down, but that doesn't mean you should immediately denounce every RPG that you come across. Even though RPGs were never meant to be enjoyed, people liked them for some reason. You should respect and understand that as much as they should respect and understand you. But even if you generally don't like something, giving it a try from time to time can open your eyes to great experiences you would have never had otherwise. Can I add you on LinkedIn? <sighs> I think I get it. I'm not an RPG guy! And sharks are just sexy fish at the end of the day. RPGs are my go-to genre, and that's okay, just like how everybody doesn't like platformers or sports games or first-person shooters or party games. My criticisms of RPGs were just opinions. They're the same reasons why people love RPGs, and that's okay! But that doesn't mean I can never like RPGs. I really like Dragon Quest and some Final Fantasy games I like, and I'm just really happy that Xenoblade's doing well, and Persona 5 is really cool. No, I'm going too far. This. 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 Hey all, Scott here. I'm not an RPG guy and I'm proud of who I am. No RPG is ever gonna make me anything otherwise.